Welcome back everyone. Today we have a special list. So list is about open world horror games and if not open world at least they should be a bit more open-ended than, than what is usual in horror. Because when we talk about horror and it's not something that you closely associated with an open world design. This is the truth. There are many that would fit the list. But for the same reason I had to stretch it quite a bit and put some games in here that albeit not horror or open, they will fit the list in some way. Unfortunately, as you can see, the list starts with Agony. So, and I didn't put it in the list because it's a good game. Agony, it's already very famous. It was released in 2018, if I recall, by Mad Mind Studios. And it's already famous because it's one of the worst games of 2018 and one of the worst games ever. It's unfortunately a good idea that was bundled with many, many problems, a plethora of bugs, uh, horrible game design, stealth sections that were just oh just thinking about it it's it's an agony sorry it's it's a pun i know it still works after so long but this is the truth the game was true truly an agony and i remember buying the game on day one i bought the game exactly when it came out because i've been waiting for it for a very long time it did seem very promising in the trailers and it did seem very promising the first images that they shown but in the end that that was just it it's a very good idea it's it's a game all set in hell and you explore that's why it's on my list it's not linear it should have been this is the true and probably that's the reason why the game it's so bad it's because it's not linear it's uh, it's very open the map uh, for what kind of game it is and how many bugs it actually has and this is agony is here uh, i would give it a rating if i had to rate it i don't even know what would i rate it i could not give it a one because as i said it does have good ideas in here it's a full game set in hell uh, some of the images unfortunately were meant to be rather upsetting and to be more of a punch in the face thing there's a lot of uh, profanity a lot of blasphemy sex and all all things that make a, a good game <laughs> and uh, that's it this this is agony if i had to rate it as i would say i would give it probably a three out of ten this because once again i do enjoy the setting of the game although this setting this hell uh, does remind me a bit of uh, the hell that is presented in god of war or, or even dance inferno because this is king to a greek hell and uh, as you all should know hell and its imagery it differentiates from religion to religion and from country to country uh, in norway for instance uh, hell is frozen it's not made of fire it's made of uh, it's made of ice uh, I know that other countries in the world they do have a, a frozen hell instead of lake of fire and there are places where the, there's not even a hell there is no concept uh, of hell which is is okay so the game because it's all set in what should horrify the player some people might not believe in hell for instance so the the images in it were, would just be amusing and and that's it that's the kind of game we have although i do admit it would be very hard to make a, a game that would scare everyone because you would have to make a, a game based on hell but based on each country where it's set and that would just require a tremendous amount of work i cannot even imagine how much work would that be so agony for instance in norway would have to change and show a frozen landscape if you go to japan would they have to show a more japanese folklore setting of hell that would be of course that would be impossible to to do. So, as I said, we start off the list with Agony. I promise that the list is going to improve. There are indeed better games in here, and I have to admit there are worse games as well. It's true, there are worse games on the list, and I, I try not to make the list 
based on, on rating, but just based on what comes to mind. And I hope you enjoy it. So I was very surprised with Amnesia, the bunker, when it came out. Just because I don't consider that it was a linear game. No, it's quite a, an open game. I do remember the, a machine for pigs, and I do remember that it was quite quite big as well. But we couldn't consider it exactly an open world game. The Amnesia the Bunker, it's funny to put it on the list of open world games because you don't really have a world, you have a bunker, but you explore the entirety of the bunker, or at least uh, what you can explore because you have to acquire some tools in order to see everything. And I'm not going to spoil the entire game in here. Uh, it's already quite well known that there are tools that you need to traverse the entire game. Otherwise, would be finished quite quickly. With that comparison, we could actually say that's a Metroidvania. Because Metroidvania requires the players to acquire abilities in order to explore the rest of the world and the rest of the map. Uh, I remember Hollow Knight and the Dumble Jumping. I remember Castlevania. It's... That's why it's called Metroidvanias in the end. And yeah, we have Amnesia the Bunker. It's a very creepy game. It did have some scares and some jumps in it. Uh, I have to admit, the design of the creature, it's not exactly what I thought it was going to be. Because there is a design of a creature in, in the cover. And it did seem like uh, some cosmic horror thing. A very original monster. And when I saw the monster, it does remind me a bit of a dog. And I have to admit that it wasn't my favorite design. So uh, after I saw it the first time, it didn't scare me as much as it should have. Because the design is fairly simple. Sorry everyone if you enjoy the design of the monster in Amnesia the Bunker, but this is true. Not exactly the most original design in the world. It looks like a werewolf mixed with a bit of a waltz. It's weird, but not unexpectedly weird. And as I said in the first images that they showed of the game, the creatures seem far more interesting. It seemed like a worm, exactly a worm with legs, and it seemed very big. I'll try to put a picture of the creature in here if it is possible. But here we have it, Amnesia the Bunker. Although, as I said, not open world. It has an open design because you can traverse the entirety of the bunker. And the bunker it is indeed quite big. Although once you get acquainted with the design of it, you will see that it looks bigger than it really is. Still quite good. And I hope they continue with the idea that Amnesia should be far more open than it was until now. So Blood West that came out of early access not long ago means that the game is now complete from start to end. I bought Blood West when it was still in early access and I don't regret it at all. I have to admit I haven't finished the first mission yet so I have no clue how the game looks uh, or the first chapter because it has three chapters and I have no clue how the game looks in the second and third chapter but for what I see must be as complete as the, the first one. The first one was quite surprising. It's huge, the map. I haven't seen it all neither and i did play a fair bit of it uh, i do enjoy the aesthetic of the game uh, it's got the playstation one vibe and uh, a western thing so if you're looking for a red dead redemption set in a mystic world where you have to fight Cthulhu Mythos creatures because some of them they do look like Cthulhu. I have to. After the first time I saw it, I really thought it was Cthulhu, but in a in a more familiar size, I suppose. So Blood West, as I said, it's uh, I would not say open world because it's not an open world. Again, you will notice that this is a trend in the entire list is that the games are not open world; they are open ended, uh, which means that you don't have an entire map like uh, GTA or as I mentioned for Red Dead Redemption to explore and for it to be a truly horror game. Yeah, 
many few will fit that description, but some of them, most of them, they are open-ended, so they have big maps to explore. You are not only walking in a straight path while things happen, which is the most common thing in horror games, especially walking horror simulation. And Blood West is an awesome surprise. I advise you to try it if you are looking for a more action-oriented horror game where you don't hide. You can hide because the game has some stealth included and it's actually advisable. And there you go, Blood West for you now. On to the next. If you ever had a game that you love, that you cannot see no flaws in it, and you keep repeating to yourself that one day you're gonna finish it, or one day you're gonna play it more, but you never manage to. To me, this is the case of Chernobylites. Uh, at first, I was going to leave Chernobylite out of the, the list, but if there's going to be some other games in here that really border on the open world design, and I still managed to squeeze them into the list, no reason not to put Chernobylite in it. So Chernobylite is not actually an open world game. As you saw, this is very common on the list already. It's more of open-ended so the levels are pretty big they are not linear but they are not open as well it's it's a very weird it's a very weird mixture of open-ended with linear design if you know what i mean i do love the game i love everything about it especially because it was inspired by stalker i love stalker and i played the first stalker years and years ago and i remember when the first stalker came out how amazed with it i was and because stalker has been dormant for years I suppose someone had to come and do a spiritual successor, to say the least, or inspired by it. It's an amazing game. Graphics-wise, it's amazing to look at. The, the area itself, which is Pripyat. I have a thing with Pripyat. I would love to visit it one day. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't managed yet, but I would like to see it. And this game allowed me to see it a bit, although with some rather unsettling mutations walking around. And yeah, this is it. Chernobylite. If you like uh, survival, because it has uh, a component of survival game, you have to build your settlements and you have to decide who to trust and who not to trust on your teammates. And toppled with the exploration is just a 10 out of 10 game that there is no reason at all not to be here. The Farm 51, which are the developers, they did manage to create something truly amazing in here. And yeah. The game came out in 2021, we are now 2024 and the graphics still look pretty amazing. So there you go, if you haven't tried it, I advise you to try it. By the time I'm doing this video, I'm looking at the Steam page and you have quite a good promotion, it's 60% off. If you don't manage to grab this promotion, do not worry, it usually comes into promotion quite often and you should really give it a shot. And without further ado, on to the next one. If you ever want what Thomas the Ancient would look like if possessed by a demon from hell, I give you Choo Choo Charles. So Choo Choo Charles is quite quite famous, I have to say. For what I remember, the game was mostly uh, an idea that the developer shared a few years ago, and because it got traction, uh, the developer decided to make a full game around that. I think it was a meme of a, of a possessed train, and it worked. The, the game soon soon enough went into full development and a few years later Choo Choo Charles came out. So I do enjoy the game. It's a, an open world. In this case it is an open world. Uh, I do enjoy the game. Uh, although I think that seeing Charles for the first time has that impact because it's quite scary. It's a, it's a demonic train smiling at you while it chases you and tries to rip you apart and break your train. But that effect quickly loses steam. Sorry for the pun. But this is true, so I do enjoy the game. I haven't finished it yet. Uh, at some point, I thought it was bigger than it should have been. It's it's a game about a demonic train. It shouldn't be so long. And the game isn't long at all. If I remember, it's around three, three hours maximum. And 
it's still I think it was way too long uh, good idea cool concept but quickly it becomes quite stark and that's a choo choo chance for you if you enjoy being chased by evil trains if you ever wondered what Thomas the Engine's evil twin brother would look like this is the game for you and on to the next one so Darkwood it does have a special place on my list because it's one of the few games that got me extremely scared I do find this game very creepy so creepy that i couldn't play it for for too long and mind you I, i'm used to horror games there aren't many things that scare me but those nights and the, the things that happen in the cabins that thing is just not normal whatever the team of developers did here it will stand in my opinion as one of the best horror games of all time and it's a very simple game actually it's a very simple game premise is simple you you are lost in a, in a dark forest and you have to escape it you have to survive it's got the survival mechanics and there you have it it's a top-down view which in my opinion nothing with a top-down view should be that scary and it is it works extremely well you have a cone of vision so you cannot really see what is around you although you do have a corner vision and is a top-down view it stops you from seeing what's exactly behind you so things still can sneak up on you if you're not paying attention the sound it's just brutal the sound is creepy it will keep you on your toes for the entirety of the game characters are quite memorable the NPCs you will remember them if you played it I'm guessing you still remember Wolfman and the first time I so I thought the game was actually taking the piss. That couldn't be a wolfman, but it was. There it is, a wolfman. So Darkwood is what I consider, again, one of the best horror games of all time. It is an open world game. You are free to explore. The uh, question is if you want to explore, because creepy stuff do happen in this Darkwoods. I advise you to play it if you haven't, and you have it. On to the next one. Dead Island Riptide. So, not exactly a sequel to the first Dead Islands, but for what I've seen, not a prequel neither. It's spin-off, you could say. I played the first one. I think most people played. If you are a horror fan, back in the day, most people probably still remember the trailer for Dead Island. And the first trailer was something, something else. But if you haven't seen it, I do advise you to search first trailer Dead Island and you will see what I'm talking about. I'm honest with you, I didn't enjoy the game. It was not exactly my kind of thing. I did like the idea of exploring and seeing the island, but it wasn't my favorite. I like Riptide because it's, as I said, the prequels. It is an open world. It's got zombies, so you can put it in a list of horror. Although, I, until Dying Light, I never considered zombies horror. So, sorry for the rest of your fans, but zombies for me are not exactly something that I do find scary. I find scary the zombies in 28 days later, because those ones, they run like hell, and there you go. Now, if it is a zombie that is walking, not exactly something that I would consider scary. But there you have it, it's my opinion. I don't want to offend no one with it. My personal taste, zombie games to me are not horror. Dying Light did it quite well. Uh, I think that is one of the most creepiest games with zombies and the evil within, the evil within as well. Although I don't consider the, the creatures in the evil within exactly zombies. They are more like they are possessed. Or, well, if you haven't seen the game or played it, I'm not going to explore here what the creatures in the evil within are. So there you have it, that island, Riptide. On to the next game. So next up we have Dai Yong by Indigala. So I haven't played much Dai Yong. I played it half an hour, one hour. I have to admit I didn't enjoy the game too much as I found that it was kind of a less a copy of Dying Light with the forest. And actually, it's just very standard. It's the idea it's you have an island, you explore, you survive, you jump around. 
as you can see in the video and that that is it as i said i didn't enjoy it much uh, it seems to have quite a big map uh, you will see it in the video as well but it was not my kind of thing uh, the game came out in 2017 it had a bit of a junk and uh, some animations were not exactly uh, as they should and the game never seems to have been fixed you can see especially in the animals the way they move it's a bit awkward <laughs> but still you can usually find it very cheap uh, i bought it i think for three pounds something like that uh, would be the the equivalent maybe of two dollars and fifty and that is it this is dayong not exactly my jam but as i said if you always find it cheap it's, it's something to to have on your list wouldn't be that bad and has it couldn't be left out of the list we have dying light one and dying light two dying light to me in my opinion one of the best zombie horror games that was ever made i always thought it was a copy of dead island for some reason a copy that surpassed the the game design of dead island Dead island was very stiff it had good ideas but very stiff and dying light came to, to solve all those problems you had no cars in here this is the truth now i guess you do you get have in the following which is the DLC for Dying Light 1, but not in the main game. In the main game, you just parkour around, you jump around buildings, and that is very satisfying, actually. Dying Light 2 improved uh, a lot of Dying Light 1 had wrong. It's bigger, the map, graphics, but it took some things and included some things that they shouldn't have needed. Uh, I think the idea of the infection timer, that always bothered me a bit, and the fact that there were no guns and the and the game bothered me a bit as well the, there is no reason for them to take guns especially because the explanation was that when the army left the city they they took all the guns that were around which even if it was a reality would be very improbable to just sweep an entire city as big as the Dying Light 2 CT is and take all the guns. Although it's still a good game, I think they included weapons now and updates, post-launch update that they did, but still an awesome game. Dying Light 1, the definitive edition, which includes all the DLCs. Usually you can buy it quite cheap. £10 would be like $8.99. And yeah, you can always play for many many hours. I advise you to try it and with that said, on to the next one. So I only include the Expedition Zero on my list because it falls into the category of horror games with big maps to explore and not because it's a good game. By a stretch, it's not a good game. I played it when it came out. A lot of bugs back then. The animation in the enemies in the AI was very stiff. Some enemies tend to get stuck in the environment and unfortunately after so long the game i don't remember when it came out but after so long it's still the same it's very buggy and not pretty to look at unfortunately yeah i wouldn't recommend you to play it it as i said only it's only on the list because it falls into the category of horror games with with the more exploration it came out in 2021. Yep, that's the only thing I have to say about it. It's free. I think it would be a very expensive game. And yeah, there's nothing in it. No redeeming qualities. It's very standard. I know I'm being very harsh on it, but if you see the video, it's 10 minutes. You, you will understand what I'm saying. It's not a good game and it will never be fixed, I think. The idea was also very standard, so I cannot even say that they had a good idea with this game because it's very standard. It's nothing we haven't seen before. And there you go. There you have it. This is Expedition Zero. And without further ado, let's go to the next one. Oh, lots. I don't think I'm pronouncing this correctly. Uh, sorry about that. It's a horror game based on the tragic accident that happened in 1959 in Russia, where a few hikers end up dead, and until now, it was never found out what happened. And the game tries to shed some light into the mystery, although with a lot of fiction, of course, because it's a horror game, so it has to have a fiction. Again, this is a game that I know it's a trend on the list, that it's only included on the list because it has a, a big map to explore. But in this case, it's not uh, It's not a good thing to say about the game. The map is huge. Your character runs like an asthmatic that smokes since he was eight years old. 
and yeah, it's it's. I couldn't recommend the game. Unfortunately, it will trick you to think that it's a good game, that it has good graphics, that it looks very impressive, and it does. For the first 15, 20 minutes, it does have impressive graphics. But after you start playing it, you, you do realize that there is a huge problem with the game. As I said, it's a huge map to explore. The map is confusing because you have to check the coordinates that the game tells you to, and some areas are not easy accessed so you have to go around huge mountains and you keep running into the same thing fortunately for me you know i played it with a mod so i played quite a lot of it with a mod to give me infinite stamina and nearly invisibility and as i was playing with infinite stamina i kept thinking that how painful would it be to play the game without infinite stamina because the map is just simply big gets you tired to run around with infinite stamina i could not even imagine how bad it would be uh, without that mod active so call out here we have it's it's a shame to, to say this about the game because it could have been a good idea uh, if some things in the game design would have been improved it would be an awesome game the idea of the map they could have improved it uh, lightning sometimes works sometimes it doesn't because sometimes the lightning is very good uh, which is uncommon for horror games but uh, the light spreads all over the place uh, with your flashlight and sometimes it suddenly goes dark in a way that you cannot even see what the hell is going on in front of you that could have been fixed the map in a clear marker of where to go could have been added as well and the stamina the stamina as well if didn't have this stupid asthmatic character running around all the time and having to stop for nearly 20 seconds after a, a three second sprint that would have been awesome and it would have made the game at least a recommendation as it is as i said it's only on the list because it is a big map it's a horror game without saying too much about it you can check the video and see if you enjoy it but as i said the video will probably trick you into think that the game is good it's not it's not a good game if you find it cheap and usually you will find it cheap around two pounds two pounds three pounds you can try it but even that is very expensive probably if it comes into a point where it's free to play probably i would advise you to play it if not free to play i don't advise you to play it now without further ado on to the next all right I included it on the list of horror games, but after playing it, I don't consider it too much of a horror game. I do consider it more of a mystery, but it's on the list because the map is quite big. You have a lot to explore. You have a car as well, but not always. You're not going to be using it all the time. You explore some patch of land in Quebec, Canada, then the setting is extremely cool. Canada as an open world map is not exactly something that you see every day in gaming. It should be more, but in this case, we have to make do with what we have. So, uh, Corner is a mystery game, as I said. It's very cool, got some very cool ideas. The history is interesting. You have the second one now, which is called Broom. I haven't played it yet, but I will at some point, and it would be included here as well. The second one looks better, of course, because it's more recent. Graphics-wise, it's, it's more on par with recent releases, but the first one, you will always find it cheap and a good price. I think I bought it for two, three pounds as well, and that would be two dollars fifty. I'm sorry, the conversion is always changing, so it might be, but it's not much difference. I advise you to try it. It's the mystery is good. Horror is very light on horror, I have to admit. Or maybe I'm just too used to games that are a bit more uh, horror oriented than this one. This is more a sci-fi thriller thing, but it's still a very good game and I advise you to try it. And without further ado, let's go on to the next game. So I always wanted to make a video about what I consider one of the best horror games of all time. Metro, I played all of them. Uh, the first one and the second one and now Metro Exodus. And I always wanted to, to make a video about it but by the time i got into it everyone and their grandmothers already made the video so there was not much of a point i'm including metro exodos in here and not the first and the second because exodos which is the last one is the one that has uh, asque 
open world. So it's still level based as the previous games, but uh, every time you move levels, you have a huge map to explore and it's a sight to behold. It's on par with the most intensive graphics games around. As I said, it's one of the best horror games I've ever seen. It's the horror, it's really on point. And yeah, you cannot go wrong with this game. You should try it. It's usually very cheap to buy. It's huge. It's got many hours to play and a lot of things to see. And if you love horror, you will love this one. So without further ado, on to the next one. I had a thing with this game. I bought it a few months after it came out. And what you see now, it's the remake of the game and I always thought it looked quite impressive and after playing it uh, the history is quite mysterious the first time I saw it it, it reminded me a bit of Silent Hill for, for some reason if you play it you will understand what I'm saying uh, I think comparisons to Silent Hill always going to be there but the map is quite big the forest is quite unique to look at and I do love this game it's been on my list to do a video for I don't even know how long now I think since the game exists that it has been on my list and I never came to do it actually I never did uh, a video about it but I'm including it here on this one and as I said I totally advise you to, to play it something Things maybe you wouldn't enjoy and those things would be that the padding sometimes you can it can be a bit hard to deal with it's a lot of stretching padding can be a problem sometimes uh, and as you walk uh, on foot everywhere and sometimes you might get lost in the environment because it's not easy to find your way in the environment you do have a map but it can be confusing at points as well but the game looks extremely awesome it, it's the forest seems uh, very well done and as you can see in the video it's the graphics are on par with new releases and yeah love this game i haven't finished it yet but i do love the game but as i said the padding sometimes can be a problem it can be quite boring to go through so you need some time to sink in well there you go there you have it someday you'll return I haven't made a full video about it as i intended but it's now included on this list thank you soliar he asked me to include scorn in this list and i have to admit i was going to completely forget that scorn exists and let me explain this before someone jumps on my throat the first time the game came out uh, i actually gave it a negative review this because uh, I do remember the first trailer for Scorn. It was released years and years ago. I think it was 10 years ago. Something like that. My memory is a bit fuzzy. I'm sorry about this, but that's the, the truth. My memory is a bit fuzzy on, the, on this. The trailer seemed very interesting uh, because back then, it was not common to have such an unusual art design in games. And this game certainly has a design in spades but this is where my grips come into effect with this game that's the only thing that the game seemed to have to me and this is just my opinion mind you it's not forcing my opinion on anyone but my case i did thought that the game does have a lot of art design it's really good the approach that they had with with the art in here but the rest of the gameplay is quite lacking uh, i remember that the first time i played the, the character moved very slowly the the puzzles were at some points extremely hard to understand the uh, visual storytelling that they have which is a bit a la dark souls or bloodborne or any of from software games where they require the player to think a bit uh, and to see the story and the game design without being told with full motions videos or cutscenes sorry guys i know I, I i say full motion videos quite a lot but this is how i remember cutscenes being called back in when i was young i never understood why but this is how they used to be called now it's cutscenes so back to score probably gave it a bad review because i didn't enjoy nothing about the game i found it quite boring this is that is it there's nothing else to add to it uh, the combat was not necessary it's one of those games that uh, it only hurt the fact that they included the uh, gameplay with weapons it, it could have been an awesome game if you were only exploring the environment and seeing what weird 
stuff there is around but in the end they decided to include this mixture of weapons and fps that doesn't have nothing uh, of enjoyable to it um, the game gave me motion sickness very rarely i felt so sick as i felt with this game this because there is a lack of a cross setting something in the game made me quite sick i know that other games that i've played they don't have a crosshair but there is something about this game that made me extremely sick and nearly made me throw up that's why i didn't want it to include it in this video because i have to play it again to capture it and hopefully i don't get sick but this is scorn it has some exploration uh, otherwise it's quite linear the environments i think the exploration is more based on the fact that your character moves like a slug and that's why it takes so long i suppose if the character was quick pacing the game would be around one hour less than that because it's not a big game per se it's not something that you could say that it's huge if i remember once again i didn't enjoy any of it the environment yes it has a an awesome environment so yeah i don't want to to say anything else about the game before someone comes in and says that i'm trying to be mean but i'm not trying as i said it's just my opinion i do love the art style of the game uh, there is nothing else like it around it has the kind of a giger vibe kind of an alien vibe which is what the game was based on is this giger vibe but in the end that's that's the only thing that the game has to it it's there's this vibe which is uncommon for a game and took the developers so many years to develop and the gameplay just lacks it's just lacks as i said and i'm going to repeat it again i would have preferred the game to be a far more walking simulator thing than having the gameplay that it has with the weird shooting and the, the fps mechanics that don't work but visually it's quite like nothing else i've ever seen but still not recommended in my opinion i will not change my opinion of it no matter how many times i play it i still cannot find anything in the game that is redeemable enough for me to to say that it's a good game but when, without further ado on to the next one so there will be a lot to say about state of dk2 the first one as well but i don't own the the first one i do have it on xbox but i don't own an xbox box anymore and state of decay 2 in my opinion it's one of the best horror games i've ever seen uh, i know i've said that about metro exodos but state of decay is there as well the map is huge yeah, it's extremely cool to look at uh, amazing as it seems uh, this is what the walking dead game should look like and for some reason it doesn't it keeps failing no reason for walking dead not to look like this but there you have it state of DK2 has a huge map of maps. You, you fight zombies, you, you stealth around, and yeah, you have huge cities to explore, which is quite cool as well. And and there you have it. Uh, I played State of DK. I don't play online. Uh, I play only with a single player. I, I use some, some mods and some sheets as well, as the game is too big and I don't have time sometimes to, to explore everything that I would like to explore. But... Uh, will come to a point where I would like to really sink my, my feet into it and explore everything that the game has to offer, especially the other maps. It's advisable of you to try it. If you haven't, uh, I think I bought it for five pounds, six, something like that. That uh, would be the equivalent of four fifty dollars and 50 cents so there you go state of decay 2 again if you haven't tried it i totally advise you to do it if you like horror of course and on to the next one I thought long and hard if I should have included the, the alien cube in this list and uh, it's a cosmic horror game so it's mostly based on the Cthulhu mythos and Lovecraft if you are aware of what these are uh, but after playing it for a while I decided that I should indeed include it uh, this because the game albeit linear 
is not as linear as it, most horror games are. So you have a, a set path, mostly it's just straightforward, but at some point you, you get to explore a bit of the map and you get to, to see quite impressive vistas. Uh, it's an indie game, I think it was made by one developer, and I have the, the other games from this developer, Alessandro Guzzo. There is a, a previous game. And uh, in this entry, because I think this is all part of the same universe. I never understood it very well, but I think this is all part of the same universe. And the previous game is called The Land of Pain. And the Alien Cube, you will see some CDs around with an ad to the Land of Pain. So if you see CDs around with it and what looks like a, a CD ROM for, for the main character in the Alien Cube to play, I think they are part of the same universe but the land of pain is just uh is just a game in this i, I didn't understand that because in truth if the land of pain and the alien cube are connected the main character in the alien cube which is the second game shouldn't have a game called the land of pain exactly with the same cover it's it's a lot of inception in here you know and very confusing to to think about it but it's both of them are awesome games and they are included because they are not linear per se but they are not open world as well they have a bit of exploration into the mix the alien cube padding in it sometimes can be a bit boring i have to admit uh, i would have loved uh, the game to be a more straightforward into into the action than it was but the story is very mysterious and if you love Lovecraft and the uh, Cthulhu mythos you will most certainly enjoy this game. I advise you to play it. Uh, it usually comes into a promotion bundled with the first one. Now, by the time I'm doing this video, there's actually a promotion with uh, both of them and it's quite cheap. So there you have it. And without further ado, on to the next game. Another game that's only on this list because it has a bit of exploration into the mix, the the chant. When I first saw gameplay and trailers for it, I was very excited about it. I thought it was a really cool idea because it, it did remind me of movies from the 80s where there is always a crazy cult and they, they try to invoke some satanic evil thing, I don't know. And when I played the game, I was very disappointed. Uh, it's really, really disappointed. So as I said, it's only on this list because it falls into the category with uh, with horror games that have a bit of exploration into the mix. Not much, mind you. The game does tricky like that. It makes you think that uh, it's more open world than than it is and the combat in the game is just brutal is something that i didn't enjoy in this case the game would have fit very well with the walking horror sim tropes it would have been better if it was just exploration instead of the combat that it has because it's as i said it's just not something that i would recommend no one to to play uh, graphic wise it seems very impressive at some points uh, at other points not that impressive so there is a, a bit of a downside to this i cannot explain it only by playing it you will understand what i mean the ambient looks really cool but sometimes the character model seems out of this game it doesn't seem from the same game which is weird as well so the story it's not that interesting as it should unfortunately this as i said it will fall into that exploration into the mix and uh, lovecraftian game but it's not very interesting i included a, a part where my character just dropped all of a sudden she just died while being touched by a monster and yep it's not scripted it's really part of the game and i couldn't understand that that's that's why i didn't play it mind you i don't mind punishing games i played bloodborne and i played elden ring dark souls and, and most of souls like games i've played them but in this case simply something that i cannot abhor in this game because the fact is i like the story i do enjoy the story but the combat in it it's something that uh I couldn't enjoy it. And as I said, I thought it was very useless. It does nothing for the game. I don't know. I suppose developers felt the need to include some combat because most players, they do enjoy a bit of action-oriented games. But there are gamers like me who also enjoy games that are a bit slower. And in this case, the the story that the game has would, would mostly 
fit into a walking horror sim but there you have it there's nothing we can do about it the game is not gonna change it is what it is but it's on this list and again i will say it's not a recommendation i won't recommend the game to no one because i myself didn't enjoy anything about the the gameplay besides the exploration and seeing the island and the cosmic horror and it is nothing about the game that i did enjoy and unfortunately because i cannot remove those parts from the game and remove the combat it goes straight forward into a non-recommendation so and without further ado let's move on to the next one so a few other games have mixed exploration with horror as well as the evil within too and i don't say this lightly i've played a lot of horror games and this game uh, i finished it three times by now uh, all of it it's i do love the game it's on my favorite list of horror games and there's not much i can say i advise you to play it if you like horror i advise you to play it it's can be extremely unsettling at some points uh, they finally fixed one of the big problems that the evil within had which is sebastian looks like a very heavy smoker and he used to to be able to to sprint for three seconds i'm exaggerating i suppose but this is the truth it was one of the biggest complaints in the first evil within was the fact that sebastian barely runs and he's a cop he looks to be more fit than me and i can run better than sebastian i could really beat sebastian in a race if push came to show but i couldn't beat him on nothing else just just that so yeah this i do love the evil within either the first one or the second one i haven't finished the first one uh, the first one was extremely punishing uh was very hard was a very hard game was tough as nails and i haven't finished it because i lost my patience at some points but they improved everything and all my grips with evil within were improved in the second one and i did enjoy it it was awesome to see uh, the the world the, that they built in here if you ask me if i would like a third one yes and no uh, i would love a third one but not with sebastian uh, if you play the game and without spoiling it uh, i think that should be the the end of sebastian they should just stop with it and move on it's one of those cases that some characters should be allowed to rest uh, because it's the same problem to me with um, chris redfield and the resident evil series that poor guy has been through hell and back and they still keep making him return over and over again and that to me is the most superhuman thing in the world is that how they make him return every single time to fight new horrors and to see new things which yeah i didn't enjoy it so uh, as i said i do think that the evil within should be back but with other characters in the evil within one they did some dlcs with other characters and they proved that it is possible to to have a game without sebastian castellanos and yeah if it comes back which i'd be surprised if it does i don't think it will ever will uh, have a third game in the series but if the second one is the last one it clearly went out with the bang and it goes on my list of the best or one of the best horror games of all time yes the game is amazing to look at the exploration is awesome the fighting is awesome and the horror is just brutal so there you have it and without further ado on to the next one in here i'm including the forest one in sons of the forest and what can i say about the forest that hasn't been said before and far more entertaining videos than this it's a brutal game the first one when i played it, it it really amazed me i played the first one back when it came into early release if i remember and there was a lot of bugs with the game i remember that when i first played it uh, my character was caught out of nowhere and taken into a cave and that's it uh, i just left the plane as the game starts and yeah, he's I didn't even saw no cannibals or nothing. He's caught and taken into a cavern. And that's it. So There's a few bugs that with time were flashed out and were solved. But the forest one is still impressive. I would say that I prefer it 
to the second one. This because uh, I do enjoy the, the liberty that you have while building your settlement. So you can make it look exactly like you want. While in the second, in the Sons of the Forest, we're a bit more limited what you can build. Or maybe it was just different way of building stuff in the in the second one not saying that the second one is not good mind you that's not what i'm saying uh, as i said it's still one of my favorite uh, horror games and perfectly blends exploration with horror uh, with mystery and yeah and nothing will ever beat especially in the first one nothing will ever beat the, the first night of survival and when the the monsters start to show up or when you have to explore the caverns nothing will ever be that feeling of unsettling and uh, and a character that is really out of his nature uh, you know so I advise you to play either the one or either the, the second one. But the first one, you always can find it cheap. The second one in no time is coming out of early release as I saw an update on Steam. Uh, no, the update is in the game itself. It says that 28 days until version 1.0 comes out, which means that it's coming out of early access, I suppose. And there you have it. This is the forest and the sense of the forest. I totally advise you to play both of them. Them. And the islands are huge and both islands they they look completely different from each other so it's not like you'll be replaying the the same map in sons of the forest you will see that there's way much more to see in sons of the forest but that's the point uh, they took from my point of view they took from the sons of the forest what i thought it was one of the most interesting aspects of the forest which is while exploring the caves you always have something new to find uh, there was always a, a secret in the caves in the sons of the forest that's not exactly what what happens it's the, the cave are very bland they're very empty and that's my only grip with the second one it's how they remove that essence of the forest but that's only my opinion well and without further ado on to the next game you might have noticed that i have a, a thing with the lovecraft and the cthulhu mythos as i really am fascinated by the idea of it and singing city i bought it uh, long time ago the game came out in 2019 if i'm not mistaken and yeah i bought it back then the idea was good the execution was not that good and in literal frog west uh, the map is very big there were no indication of where to go and that made me lose my patience after a bit so i didn't play it as much as i should play a quarter of it i think sorry i'm trying to think about it and yeah i played a quarter of it i think and i did lost my patience after a while after seeing the same streets over and over again and looking at the map and try to pinpoint where I would have to go. Some people enjoy this part of the game. The, the idea that there is no hand holding, but I myself I didn't enjoy it at all. And it did, did make me lose my patience after a while. So uh, I still advise you to try out the game. There was some brucos around who used to own the Sinking City, but now that problem is solved. I think Frogwares now exclusively owns the sinking city and yeah they released an updated version i couldn't understand that as well because i've played the updated version in the last version i couldn't understand what changed nothing seemed to have changed beside the fact uh, of who owns the, the game but it's total recommendation uh, if you can go along with some junk animation because it has some junk animation let's just face it uh, the bugs characters uh, phasing out of reality they are very constant as well the combat i have to admit i didn't enjoy the combat i do understand some games they need combat to look a bit more appeasing to all kinds of gamers but in my case i didn't enjoy it that's just my opinion. I would love the game to, to have less of it and more investigation and more exploration than what it had. Yeah. Especially because I couldn't understand much of the combat and what's the point of it. But still, it's a good game. It's 
one of the only cosmic horror games that is fully open world because it is a full open world game and yeah i advise you to play it you can find it cheap now uh, from time to time it comes into a, a huge promotion so if you can find it at a price that fits you i advise you to try it and that's the end of the list thank you very much everyone for watching i hope you enjoyed this uh sorry my my voice is a bit weird uh, i think i'm catching cold and yeah this list it's something that i always wanted to do and i never managed to do it you can see why it's a very extensive list uh, i didn't speak as much as i wanted in all the games and i didn't went deeper into core mechanics of the games and how big they are but that's probably for another list i hope you enjoyed if you did enjoy the list don't forget to click the like button if you're not subscribed please uh, subscribe if you have any recommendations of more exploration games uh, i should try just leave it in the comments and i will give it a shot thank you very much and have an awesome day